Hello. Hello. Oh yeah, that's right. When things don't work right, things never work right. I can't believe that. Oh wait, welcome back. For I am the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. And you missed this guy on WWE, potentially on Raw, because, because as you will see very shortly, I got my invitation. Somehow, I managed to clock in at the right time. Wow, that sounds good. I managed somehow to clock in at the right time. I got my, I guess, waiting papers. And as you will see, I was scheduled to be on WWE Raw. But I guess no one left. And I guess I, I was like a fill-in. They made me feel like a number two. I wanted to be number one. Or at least if there were 100 seats, I wanted to be number 100. I didn't want to be number 101. Boo, WWE. But good news. <laughs> Actually, the best news of them all. August 14th. Check out my live stream of Triple A. Yes, that's right, folks. Triple Mania is coming back. The one, the only Hobo Tom. It's going to have a Triple Mania party. I'm going to bust out the big screen. I'm going to have some tacos, some burritos, some Mexican sodas, tequila, rum, all the good stuff. I'm going to have a 100% certified, bona fide watch party for Triple Mania. August 14th, be there or, or, or be a Rudo, I guess. Well, first of all, I'd like to start the show with these images. I mean, look, look, look at this. I was all set. And then here is the one email, the first email I got. And then today's email. What happened? Boo WWE, you know you want to have the one, the only Hobo Tom live on TV. But I guess it wasn't meant to be. Oh well. Now they're going live. They, who knows if they ever come back here to Daytona Beach. Maybe they just don't like Daytona Beach. Who knows. But on the positive side, I have some thank yous to give out. Inex. Man, you're right. So right that you win twice because you always get that six count.
lustrous hair. I'm gonna like her. I'm not. Matt Riddle's bong. Yeah, I know. WWE will never show the good stuff. But you, sir, are the good stuff because you are a master of the air guitar. Nico of death. You, sir, are just chilling out there with your briefcase boombox. Ted DiBiase. V. Ted DiBiase. <laughs> Everyone has their price. Someone's going to have to pay. And you, sir, are known for making people pay by placing them in the dirty pen. Henny Maru? You can crawl out of here. <laughs> Kumin Rider, you, sir, are a member of the El Generico band. You know what, Master Azerbaijan? Holy shit. So a lot of being said, you know what? I haven't done this in a while. It's about time I do this. Uh, when we get this done, I want to shower up because I was running around so excited. I'm like, I'm going to be on TV. I'm going to get five minutes of fame. I got zero minutes of fame. 
I skipped a shower. I cooked actually a pretty decent meal for a change. But yeah, all, all for now. So I'm going to probably use the bathroom because I've been kind of holding it because I didn't want to use the bathroom. And then all of a sudden they say, oh, you need to come on screen now. That's not necessarily a good sight or something you want to see, I think. But um, that and I do need to take a shower. And then I'll probably start. Oh, big news. Do not forget this coming. Oh, wow. Next Monday. Memorial Day Madness. For the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. I got to start taping that stuff. So I have a whole bunch of matches set up just for your viewing enjoyment. And there might be a little bonus intro or outro. We'll see. Oh, yeah. I have to. Should do that too. Oops. Say, so, hey, you're gonna be a guest on the show. Enough about that though. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. And I'll tell you what, a lot of people were shocked. This was actually a pretty good Monday Night Raw. I was surprised myself. Um, it seemed to go a lot quicker than three hours, although I really started to care only at the nine uh, nine hours at uh, nine nine thirty p.m. Mainly because that was my seating time, as you could tell by the pictures I just posted. Boo, WWE. But yeah, it started off um, 8 o'clock Lashley. And I'll tell you what, those were not college girls. The week before were college girls. These were other girls. It starts with a C, and they're all there. Girls. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, they, they, they were professional. I'll say that. Um, so he comes out. Uh, of course, Drew McIntyre comes out, challenges him. And then, of course, because Kofi Kingston beat him, Lashley's sitting on a couch in a nice, big, comfy-looking leather. I don't like leather couches. What are your guys' opinions about leather couches? T to me, one, I can't have it because my cat would destroy it. Not so much that she would shred it, but I would just see little, like, pokey claw marks all over it. And two, because of the hot, humid Florida weather, that thing just must, like, retain water and, like, leather starts to smell when it gets wet. I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. But that was a pretty big, pluffy-looking couch, though. And, and, and some of those women were, were kind of fluffy looking themselves but yep um, so he's watching the match because match the uh, match started off and I'll say this it's a lot better that Raw put on longer matches and made the feel made, made the whole entire show feel a little bit shorter and it, it's just they just weren't going 7-7 seven seven, like, like that. I want to say this match I didn't time it it had a, it had a feeling of like 15 good 15 to 20 good solid minutes before there was a screwy finish, which I'm not necessarily a fan of, and that's why he downgraded it. But so we start off with Kofi Kingston taking on Drew McIntyre. Very classic tie of match. The strength, the uh, strength is tested, and you know, the classic collar and elbow tie up. Really good stuff there. Um, Drew's obviously the stronger of the two. Kofi got caught. He got, <laughs> he just got into like a toss German, a release German suplex. That looked great. Uh, Kofi does his comeback again. Kofi's much more the finesse wrestler. He's not going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Drew. He's not going to meet Drew McIntyre's strength on strength. But he's going to go for finesse and some flippy stuff. Um, outside the ring. Oh, I'll tell you what. This looked absolutely horrifying. If I saw that thing, if I saw that apron, I don't care how soft and pluffy it is. Because it kind of is. Like, if you see how much padding is really on that ring apron... That's some thick stuff. I mean, I do say, when I was in the ring once, the turnbuckle, the turnbuckle pads themselves, oh, they're so soft. The only thing that made it comfortable is, is that it's like leather. And it's, it doesn't matter how much stuffing you put in something leather, it's not going to feel that comfortable. But still, I mean, you could like bounce your head off that stuff and you wouldn't feel a thing. You, you might get like leather to burn on top of your forehead. Probably where all this left. But, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, seeing this, the way 
could have got Alabama slammed into into the um, I think like the re even reverse Alabama slam that just looked nasty. Just knowing that it's coming at you at a decent velocity, or that you're going at that at a decent velocity, it's kind of terrifying. Then, let's see, here. Kofi then eight got draped over the barricade. Eventually, Kofi makes his comeback to the springboard drop kick. He has his ups a little bit. Uh, there was no guillotine. Drew's way too strong for that. <laughs> then. The Jamaican headbutt is, is, is not a strong headbutt at all. It just kind of like dazed Drew a little bit. Not like the Scottish headbutt or the Samoan headbutt. Because remember, Samoan headbutt, Scottish headbutt, American headbutt, Canadian headbutt, and then probably like Jamaican. And then, well, actually, yeah. Samoan, Scottish, African, American, Canadian, and then probably Jamaican headbutts. The fifth most powerful headbutt there is. Uh, that was... Uh, the cross body, but Drew again roll, rolled him through that. Went for the future strike DDT, that kind of counter. A lot of good counter wrestling. Um, it was a Drew has a great set out, set out power bomb. That just looks terrifying because you're coming down from such a height. Mainly because Drew is so tall. Oh, the funny thing. Yes, I, I probably mentioned this before. This Drew McIntyre, my sister actually met Drew McIntyre and got a picture with Drew McIntyre. At NXT, and it was so funny because she put on her makeup, like like put on like I don't know all that girly stuff, and I'm like staring at her I'm like, please, are you kidding me? When I met poor Nixon Newell, the girl with the shiniest wizard, she saw Hobo Tom in all his glory, and she was utterly confused. And check out my thumbnail for my for NXT, and I will be covering NXT tomorrow, too. It's always good to cover that. I'll be covering that live. So, yeah. That's always fun. I saved that. That's a thumbnail for the Tuesday seat night with me and Tegan Knox. Uh, or Nixon Newell, the girl of the shiny wizard. Uh, eventually, there, there was a schmoz. Xavier Woods came in the same time Bobby Lashley came in. Xavier attacked Drew McIntyre, Lashley, whatever. Uh, then after Kofi, no one knows who wins. Um, Drew, uh, Drew actually did kick, before that happened, Drew actually kick, kicked out of an SOS, which was pretty good. Uh, Lashley comes in, again, Xavier one comes in, Xavier eats a Claymore, so does Lashley. I'll tell you what, this was on its way of being a surf and turf match, but because of the death definitive, baby, nobody wins. With the dusty old cheeseburger of a mat, sweetheart. And then we get into the Charlotte and Asuka recap. And Nikki Cross shows up. Nikki Cross, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Um. So that was good. She's like, oh, I, you can't beat me in two minutes. Well, that's my Australian. I can't do, I can't, uh, I can't do, oh, there we go. That's my Scottish accent. You cannot beat me in two minutes. That's not possible from Nikki Glenn Cross. From the Highlands of Scotland, the Jutland. So Muriel says, oh, I, I'm Australian. I can bite anything in two minutes. Oh, I wrestle Crocs. I, I, I F5, great white sharks. I go fishing for five foot long grouper in my bare hands and my knickers and my, my, minus my knickers. So I can do anything. I'll beat you, Nikki Cross, in a New Zealand two minute match. I don't know if it's a New Zealand two minute match, but yeah, the challenge, challenge is on and challenge accepted. Um, then, of course, then they go to break to commercial. More Eva Marie. Um, all pink everything Eva Marie. Kind of not looking forward to this. This is going the way that her same um, gimmick came about. When she would come out, tease something, and like have like a hamstring pull. 
So I strain a hamstring, have a wardrobe malfunction, uh, someone sort of clothes or something. It's, it's something stupid. Oh, and I have to start deleting some videos because I'm running out of computer space. It's never a good thing. So yeah, so um, I was Rhea Ripley taking on Nikki Cross in a two-minute cha two challenge. When we get back, oh yeah, then Damian Priest says something in Spanish. I have no clue what, what, Spanish, what Spanish is. Um, I've had people yell at me in Spanish. I, I just I just hang up the phone on them like like I know speak English. You're not helping me, miss. It's like it's like I'll call a Spanish interpreter. I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what you're saying either. Bonk goes the phone. So yeah, whatever Damien Priest said, whatever. Um, not necessarily the best representative of Latin. Maybe Puerto Rican wrestlers, but. Umberto's probably more charismatic. Uh, Mysterio definitely is more charismatic. Angel Garza has all the charisma. So yeah. Well, oh. then we our next match was Rhea Ripley taking on Nikki Nikki Cross in the two Metal Scottish Challenge. Gone Nikki Gone Cross, coming from the Highlands of Jutland, the Highlands of Scotland. Connor. Um, Nikki Glen Cross of the Clan Glen Cross. Aye. Um, so in the two minute challenge match, Nikki goes right after Rhea Ripley. Uh, Rhea Ripley caught Nikki doing a basic fun a hot splash, a, a cross body. However, Nikki gets done back on the ground, has a jawbreaker. Then she goes up to the top rope and does the flying cross body. Um, Rhea Ripley gets upset, starts pounding Nikki Cross and in the corner, and then all of a sudden, the, the clock shows up. It's like 30 seconds, and, and Rhea Ripley's like, like yapping away and, and, and saying all this bad stuff. And I'm like, wait a second. Now there's 10 seconds left. She needs three seconds for the pin. Oh, you know what? Nikki Cross wins! Nikki Cross, again, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Oh, that's right. I have to get this whole area set up freaking for tomorrow. And I should do that too. Now, ish. Yeah, I can do that while I talk a little bit. Um. So yeah, Nikki Cross wins. Ripley's kind of confused. She's like, "Oi, I'm a New Zealander. I come from the land on under. Women go asunder. Mm, something with thunder. Because I once knew a man from Brussels who offered me a Vegemite sandwich." Something like that. So yeah, um, she was confused. And in the back, so um, Nikki Cross won. It's a cheeseburger match. Oh, we forgot to open up. That's okay. Oh, what computer do I want to do that on? I'll figure that out. Figure so much stuff out tomorrow. Yeah, I'll do that on that computer. That's, but yeah, um, then there's a segment with Adam Pierce and Drew McIntyre backstage, along with Kofi Kingston. He's like, hey, we're sick of all this sh shenanigans happening. We want a shenanigan free match. So you'll get it. Um, then we have Charlotte comes out. And, and she just looks like the Wicked Witch of the Wicked Witch of the West. Whatever surgery she got, I guess this kind of helped her out look wise a little bit. I think I was talking with a friend, so yeah, I wouldn't necessarily turn her away. I said, you know what? I'd be willing to do the walk of shame. And I think those that I talked about earlier. Oh wait, do I work tomorrow? Today's Monday. Oh, Saturday was, oh, that's why, that's the first. Oh, that was actually canceled? Oh, wow. I did not know that. So I was disinvited. It's tomorrow. But yeah, um, yeah. I would do the walk of shame for Charlotte, I guess. I could definitely see me doing a lot worse. Um, so yeah, she's going to face... Oscar. 
And the next match, this is work. So this will be interesting. I wonder what my schedule is next week. I can take a look at that. I read my notes. Um, actually, pretty good match. Classic tie-up. A lot of mat wrestling. That's good. Uh, Charlotte hits a judo toss. That's always fun to see. Whenever you're, whenever the the wrestlers actually apply real grappling moves, it just does make it much more realistic and a lot more believable. It, it makes it make sense. It makes it feel like a pro wrestling match too. Oh sh! Oh wow! I have one day. Fourth. Don't do anything that day, so that's good. Wow, that's it? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm like so distracted. There we go, I got that done. I do have to keep an eye on that clicker. Um, so yeah, she does a, she does a judo toss, it's always good to see that. Asuka does a hip attack. Second time, though, she does it too often. Second time, always gets countered. I know. Uh, Charlotte begins to work over Asuka's leg. The knee break, knee break on the steps look great. Asuka then rolls up Charlotte. She begins to the, the near GTS. Uh, Asuka works over, of course, the arm of Asuka. Each of them targeting kind of the body part of the other that they're that they're known to target. Asuka is known for the um, Asuka lock, a lot of arm bars. Charlotte's definitely known for the figure four, or figure eight, all the leg locks. Uh, so that's pretty good. Charlotte did the uh, draping backbreaker. That's good. And then Charlotte hit a roll up without, have, without having anything fall for a change. She found the double sided tape. I guess that's good. Um, yeah, that was weird though. Like, to win, for Charlotte to win by roll up? It is what it was. Oh, uh, still a good back. A solid cheeseburger match. Yeah, and the Lashley's just in the back, in, in the official VIP lounge, with all the um, uh, ladies. I'll, I'll I'll call them that, I guess. Girls. <coughs> Had to cough out some of that delicious buttery popcorn. I had the double butter popcorn. Next time I'll try the ultimate butter popcorn. Watching wrestling with popcorn just should be like natural, natural experience. Yeah, and um, then he goes. Says, yeah, I'm going to go talk to Adam Pierce. Shelton Benjamin, um, then talk some trash to Cedric Alexander. These two will probably have a match to come hell in a cell. This will be a grudge match. This was actually really good. Shelton just wrecks Cedric Alexander. This is just a grudge match. So it says, uh, Cedric goes after Shelton. Now again, heavy and strike. A classic, wrestling, a classic wrestling moves. These two are so good. Cedric does hit the, the neuralizer. I'll tell you what, solid, quick match. Told a great story. How Cedric's obviously more younger. He has that more youthful energy. Shelton Benjamin's the uh, uh, time, the, the tested and true veteran. Cedric's not above cheating because he, po again, poked Shelton Benjamin right in the th thumpty of the eye when the ref couldn't see that. Good to see that from, from Cedric Alexander. Solid match. Cheeseburger match. Then there was a recap of what happened between the New Day and RK Bro. So that was pretty good. So, you know, once that happened, um, we we're going to have a match with. And I can't say it enough. Boo Miz. Because um, then we had Matt Riddle taking on Xavier Woods. Great judo throw by, by Matt Riddle again. He. Brought in a lot of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Woods, the alligator roll. Great technical collegiate style wrestling from Woods. The Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu aspect of it from Matt Riddle. That's good stuff. Um, there was the X. The, uh, Xavier did a suplex. Then he did a great awkward looking suplex. This looked like a real, real match. It's like, yeah, I can't get you up. But I'm going to do exactly what I can do. I'll get you in the hold I want. It might not be perfect. It... It didn't seem clunky, which is good. It seemed very smooth. Um, it, it just felt like a fight. Like, if you're going to pick someone up, they're not going to just go over willy-nilly with you. So that's good to see. 
Uh, there was a train of strikes and with a double clothesline. Uh, Xavier would see that DVD, uh, Death Valley Driver, onto the apron. That was really good. They get back in the ring. Um, I did not see what happened because I was upset and trying to figure out if I'd be able to get on this thing. But Matt Riddle won. Kind of like um, use a version of the RKO, the, the SVR bro. You know what? Solid cheeseburger match. It was AJ Styles taking on Jackson Riker. Um, with this match, again, when AJ Styles took on Gunner, the impact was a little bit better. But this was pretty good. A AJ Styles, again, he's so quick. He's so he, AJ Styles can do so much in the ring. He can make any, he can make a freaking broomstick look good. Uh, Jax, again, he's stronger than AJ, but AJ's definitely quicker, more agile. However, it took interference by Elias, who was hiding behind the timekeeper's table. Uh, hit a big running on AJ, threw him in. Uh, Riker finished with a big spinning sidewalk slam. Pin AJ Styles. One, two, three. But again, it was with interference. So it was kind of a protected win. Omar saw this, obviously, backstage. He says, AJ told him, you know what? Tranquilo for now. I'll I can take care of this guy. Um, probably mistake on his part. Omas was backstage. He came out a little bit late. Found. <laughs> it was a great look. People say Elias is bad, but his his facials and reactions are timeless, though. Because he was hiding on, like behind the the uh, uh, timekeeper's area, the timekeeper barricade. Amash just socks over, gets to the timekeeper area, looks down. He just, Jackson Wright and Elias just very simply tilts his head back. And because of his beard and long hair, it's a great visual. He just looks up and realizes, yeah, he messed up. He runs. Um, you know, I'm just saying they never really saw him run so fast. Uh, he did stumble a little bit, and then he got shoved right into the LED boards. The only thing with that, if he's going to get shoved into the LED boards, you have to have, like, the ridiculous effects. Only thing that was missing. Um, the AJ Styles match, it was, it, was, it was what it was. Solid. It was, it was an okay match. Ham sandwich match. Then we had Sheamus taking an Umberto Carrillo. They really need to push Umberto to the moon, though. Um, Sheamus starts off pretty quickly, just beats on poor Umberto with about 10 beats in the ring. Um, Umberto, again, he gets his comeback, quick leg drop. However, Sheamus wins with a roll-up and grabbing the tights. Sheamus is not above cheating, which is the way a proper heel should be. Um, so Sheamus picks up the win. Pretty, pretty quick match, though. I want to see more of a build for this, unless they're going to wait the three more weeks, I think, for Hell in a Cell. Maybe switch the title there. Maybe finally give the title to Ricochet or something. Maybe have a triple threat. That would be... No, they're not going to have a triple threat for that title. Last rest... Oh, last... What was it? Backlash. Way too many triple threat matches. Not that enjoyable. Triple threat matches have to be something special. And this isn't that special for it. And there's been too many of them. So, yeah, um, it should just be Umberto wins, then eventually Ricochet challenges him to, to a, a technical e technical match for tri in Triple Mania. <laughs> I, I could only hope. Because uh, I know it is going to be. El Idolo Andrade Cien Almas taking on the cleaner Kenny Omega. For the AAA Mega Championship and Triple Mania, that's going to be great. Um, I think the other there's always going to be the uh, Arias six woman tag hospital match. It's the only way to call that. Um, there's going to be the bloody match between I think Psycho Clown and either Pagano or I think it's going to be Chessman. Um, they'll have the ridiculous match. And a couple opening matches. So, yeah. Triple Mania is, again, greatest spectacle ever. 
See, look, WWE, I even put on an officially licensed merch shirt. The Macho Man, yeah. Macho Man is still running wild a little bit. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, this match, um, the Sheamus match, solid ham sandwich match. And then the main event, which probably should not have been the main event. Um, it, was, it was Natalia and Tamina taking on Nia Jax and Shannon Baszler. I'm trying to think. When did I use that line? Nico Death said something. Or was it the, or the Ted DiBiase said something? I said, no, I see plenty of ass. Just call me an astronaut. He found that utterly hilarious. That, that that's that's a line from. I forget what song it is. I want to say it's from the Friday soundtrack. I forget if I find it one day, or if I play it, and realize what it is, I might set it up as some sound. But we'll, we'll see. And I have time to build this shower, and get at least one or two matches in before bedtime. So actually, my new alarm clock's freaking amazing too. Wow, I just realized I'm not used to talking this much. I'm used to talking more. I don't know. But yeah, it was a Natal a Natalia Nightheart Tamina and taking on Nia Jax and Shannon Baszler. Um, Reggie alone was told to stay in the back. There was no Alexa Bliss in her doll, though. If you're going to have the weird fire stuff happening, you need you need those two. Kind of explain the better. Uh, Shane, uh, Shannon starts off with Tamina, takes a swipe at Natalia, who is, of course, Forever Kmart mom. Um, and then Natalia gets in. Uh, Natalia again goes for a quick cover. However, then she, she gets in trouble with that. Uh, the arm stomp. Shana places her in the figure nine, the sharpshooter. And kind of mocking Natalia's family's, the, the Hart family tradition of the, of the um, sharpshooter. Um, begins to work over Natalia's arm. Reginald comes out. Acts as a super distraction. And then we get Tamina versus Nia Jax. So it's a slingshot super kick, which looks good. Reggie shows up. Um, it's very quickly shooed away by Shayna Baszler after the fact that she rolled up Natalia. Even though Reggie did do the initial distraction, when Shayna was in the uh, sharpshooter, she rolled her up, but distracted the ref too long. Um, he goes up the ramp and ooh, fire hits him. From both sides somehow. I don't know. And then Shane is like, you know what? I'm going to fight you next week. If you have the balls. That was so good. And then Nia ripped. Nia ripped part of her um, pants. I don't know why this was the main event. Especially when Alexa Bliss wasn't there. Um, didn't make much sense. But, oh well, you know, this is the WWE. Kind of a ham sandwich main event. So, a really kind of a fizzle of a show for some reason. Started off really good as it got down. And probably because of the fact that I was in... The, the fact that this guy, the one, the only hobo Tom was not there, probably took away from it as well. So, we'll see. So, a little bit about this week's schedule. Because this is a weird week because of AEW, Memorial Day, a whole bunch of other weird stuff. Um, let's see here. So, there is no wrestling on Wednesday because AEW is preempted by basketball. So, it's going to happen. And for fortuitous or not, um, they're gonna have, there's going to be a double wrestling show. On, there might be a double wrestling show on Friday. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Because tomorrow, I'm going to be here live streaming NXT. NXT. Uh, the main event, they're going to have Finn Balor taking on Karrion Cross. If Finn wins, he gets a challenge for the title. You know, <laughs> everybody has their price, Cameron Grimes. Uh, Ted DiBiase confronts Cameron Grimes. It's going to be great to see. I have no idea what the other matches are. There's going to be some, like, squash match. Probably some, like, women's match no one cares about. Uh, Wednesday, I will not. Ooh, I could do that Wednesday. 
Wednesday I might make a short video because I'm going to do the my double or nothing predictions. Now this is going to be weird because Thursday is going to be impact. That's that's a normal impact live stream. Friday I might do a double live stream. We'll see how I feel. So that's a shorter work. That's a shorter work day for me. So it actually worked out pretty good because I do have to work and do my grocery shopping Wednesday to start cleaning up the freaking house. But Friday will be a double show. It'll be SmackDown first, and then I think AEW Dynamite's coming on at 10 on TNT. Wednesday, I'm going to have double or nothing predictions because that should be set for the most part. And then Saturday I'm off. Because I don't know why. I, see, this is going to be my, and I'll try and keep it under like three minutes. But this is my rant and rate. AEW, it was so much more fun when the AEW pay-per-views were on Saturday. It was something different. Um, Sunday has traditionally been a WWE night for pay-per-views. And, and some pay-per-views you can skip, some, some you can watch. I don't know. Maybe it's just the timing of stuff. Because Sunday I have to work, go up to Jack's, pick up a friend, come back Monday. And then next week is going to be a little bit screwy too. Mainly because I don't know what my work schedule is yet. Well, I did work, do work, I think the 4th. If I saw that right. I can check that later. But... So Monday, I'm going to do my traditional Memorial Day Madness for the Daytona Beach Bumfight League. I might, well, I'm going to have to skip Raw that night because then having a friend come over, she's sleeping over. I have to drop her off Monday night, be back here Tuesday morning for work. Then it's just going to depend on the work schedule, so yeah. This is kind of a semi-normal week. Next week, yeah, we'll see. Oh, also, you know what, folks? All you folks out there, you need a job. I've spoken to Corporate Tom, and he says his company is hiring. Check out this picture. That's right, folks. You need to apply for a job. Get back to work, USA. 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 Um, so with that being said,